Hello, do you want to know what the current state of prosecutorial discretion in the immigration law world is? Well, this video is for you. My name is Jorge Molina. I am an immigration attorney based in Dallas, Fort Worth, we're serving clients worldwide. And today we're going to be talking about prosecutorial discretion or PD. So if you have been following this topic, in, in the last year or two years, you know that there was a court order saying that it cannot be in place. Um, um, a, a memorandum that was changing the priorities for deportations for the Department of Homeland Security. Um, this is known as a Doyle memo. The good news is that the Supreme Court ruled that, in fact, you know, as all other administrations, the current administration can decide how to enforce the laws in the United States. So the Doyle memo is back in effect, and ICE and generally speaking DHS has um, said that they're moving forward incorporating in, into its practice. Okay, so um, what's going on with prosecutorial discretion? We need to look at this within the context of the larger immigration system in the United States. And the reality is this, we have a growing um, growing case um, load throughout the United States in immigration courts with CIS and other offices. So just to give you an example, about maybe six to eight months ago, we had about 100,000 cases pending in the immigration court in Dallas. Now we have approximately 150,000 and that number keeps growing. So we know that ICE offices where we can make the request for PD are overwhelmed. So in my neck of the woods, in Dallas, we were just recently told that there's over 100,000 requests for PD. Again, PD can be anything, right? It could be not to issue notice to appear in court. It could be to dismiss a case. It could be to agree on some facts or elements of the case. It could be anything. Um, however, we know that 100,000 um, requests have been made to the Dallas office. So that is a very big and overwhelming number. So the end result is the following, right? So you can make your request. They are interpreting the Doyle memo based on internal guidelines. So what ends up happening, even though that you might submit a PD request many months in advance or several weeks in advance, what could end up happening is that you're still going to show up to court and have to talk to the attorney for ICE and whether they want to agree on whatever it is that you're requesting. So the bottom line is this, and this is the way that I'm seeing um, things for PD. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. In our cases, what do we do? We prepare a case as if you're going to the final hearing anyway. Okay, we're prepared for the HS saying no to our request in court, hoping that they say yes, but even if they say no, we're well prepared. Now, folks, if you're considering um, PD for your particular case or you think it could help a loved one, please consult an experienced immigration attorney can walk you through the process, can explain a little bit more about how your facts and your case applies to the PD memo. Again, my name is Jorge Molina. If you like this video, please hit like, share, perhaps follow us. Again, thank you for watching.